you're having an amazing weekend. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us this amazing Sunday. I hope you're enjoying the beautiful weather. Whether you're here in person or online, we're just so thankful you're worshiping with us. If you have not filled out one of our connection cards, those are found in the pew back in front of you or online. Don't forget to fill one of those out so we can have all of your information and get you plugged in. You can put those in the offering plate when you're done. Also, if you have a prayer request, no matter what it is, who it's for, don't forget to fill out one of those cards, also found in the pew back in front of you, or online as well, and you can drop that off in the offering plate. Just a few announcements before we get started. The first is, church conference is coming up way sooner than you think, Sunday, November 6th at 1230, here at the church, be there or be square. Our children and youth ministries are in full swing. For all of our kids that are pre-K through fifth grade, we hope to see you every single Thursday for Spark. We're actually having our Spark Halloween party this week, so if you want to come dressed up, you are more than welcome to do that. Uh, again, that's at 6 o'clock every Thursday. And also, we have Stoke Youth Group every Sunday night. So tonight, from 7 till 8.30, hope to see all of our middle school and high school students there. The Women's Service League is putting on a coat drive for the entire month of October, so you have a few weeks left to put some coats in those boxes in the fellowship hall. These are going out to people in need so that they can stay warm and have coats like my beautiful one right here. Don't forget to donate and thank you for donating so much already. All Saints Sunday is coming up November 6th. If you have lost someone over the last year and you want them to be recognized and remembered on that day, please contact the church office so we make sure that we have a rose for them and we can get their name on the roll of the receipts that we're gonna be reading. Um, again, this is an amazing way to remember and recognize those who have gone before us in the glory over the last year. So again, contact the church office. Christmas, my favorite thing ever, is just around the corner, and that means Operation Christmas Child is happening again. Don't forget to pick up a shoebox in the fellowship hall if you feel called to. You can fill this with gifts for a boy or a girl, and you can mark that so that we know. And these are going to be shipped out all over the world to people who usually wouldn't get Christmas gifts. This is an awesome mission that blesses people literally everywhere. So again, don't forget to pick up a shoebox found in the fellowship hall and drop it off at the church by November 18th. As many of you may remember, there's been a lot of stuff going on with the United Methodist denomination over the last few years, and we're going to be having some town hall meetings coming up uh, just to keep us informed and to let you guys know what's going on. These town hall meetings are going to be uh, this next Sunday, October 30th. Uh, right after the 11 o'clock service, so probably about 1230-ish, uh, and then we're going to be having another one on the 13th of November. So if you want to know what's going on, and this is another way for us to kind of see where you guys are at, please join us for those town hall meetings again on October 30th or on November 13th. Again, thanks, and let's continue to worship together. Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful morning. It's great to have you here this morning with us. Let's stand and worship together.
nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go boldly for us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. Again, I want to welcome you to worship this morning. It's a beautiful morning. It's great to be together in the house of the Lord. Let's continue in, uh, in singing together. And I was going to start the prayer, but it's not time for the prayer. It's time just to keep singing. Like, who's going to start the prayer? It's me. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation we believe, we believe. In this broken generation, when all is dark, you help us see, there is only one salvation, we believe, we believe. Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. We believe, we believe. 
Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. in prayer together. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this morning. We're thankful for a chance to gather and worship. We are here because we believe. We believe in your plan for us. We believe in your greatness and majesty. We believe in your son, Jesus Christ, who was sent to earth, crucified, dead, and buried. We are are so thankful, though, that he was resurrected through your power and lives as an example to us, an example and hope for eternal life. We're thankful to be together to worship and praise your name. And as we uh, are here gathered with friends, family, people that we maybe know and maybe don't know, we ask that your spirit be upon us now as we worship your name. This through your son we pray. Amen. Please have a seat. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Good. At this time, I'm going to dismiss the kids to go to Children's Church. Miss Chris and Mr. Danny are going to lead that up today. Uh, for those that may not know me, my name is Will Flaherty, and I serve as the Director of Children and Youth Ministry here. Uh, and before I get started, there is one announcement I do want to share with you all this morning. Um, and that is, unfortunately, a member of our congregation has passed away. John Schmidtman went to home to be with the Lord this last Friday. Uh, his funeral service will be here at the church Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Uh, there will be a funeral luncheon to follow. And if you can help out with that funeral luncheon, please contact Savannah Tucker or Melissa Iwan. But uh, just let know that our thoughts and our prayers are with the Schmidtman family at this time. So buckle up because I got a little bit of a longer scripture for you guys this morning. But sit back and relax and hear the word of the Lord. It says this. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know the things that have been happening to me while I've actually, the things that have actually happened to me have advanced the gospel. The whole Praetorian Guard and everyone else knows that I am a prisoner for Christ. This is Paul speaking. Most of the brothers and sisters have been more confident through the Lord to speak the word boldly and bravely because I am in jail at this time. So certainly preach Christ. Some certainly preach Christ with jealous or competitive motives, but others preach with good motives. They are motivated by love because they know that I am put here to give a defense of the gospel. Others preach Christ because of selfish ambition. They are insincere, hoping to cause me more pain while I'm in prison. What do I do about this? Just this. Since Christ is proclaimed in every possible way, whether it whether for honest or true motives, I am glad and I will continue to be glad. I am glad because I know that this will result in my release through your prayers and help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. It is my expectation and my hope that I will not be put to shame in anything. Rather, I hope with daring courage that Christ's greatness will be seen in my body now as always, whether I live or die. Because for me, living serves Christ, and dying is even better. If I continue to live in this world, I get results for my work. But I don't know if I would prefer to be torn between these two, because I want to leave this life to be with Christ, which is far better. However, it is more important for me to stay in this world for your sake. I am sure of this. I will stay alive and remain with you to help you progress with joy and your faith, to increase in your pride in Jesus Christ through my presence when I visit you again. So this is Philippians 1, chapter, or chapter 1, verses 12 through 26. And we're actually going to be in the book of Philippians between now and the Advent season. And it is our hope that as we dive into this book, these, this letter to Paul to the people in Philippi, that we discover new truths and maybe rediscover some things we've forgotten and how we can apply God's holy word into our lives here in the 21st century. 
But I want to start by asking you guys a question. How many of you guys have ever known somebody that no matter what happens, they always have the most negative outlook on life ever? Anybody? Do we have a few hands? I see a few. Good. It's hard to be around those people, isn't it? Because no matter what's going on in life, they just always seem to bring everything down. Everything is doom and gloom. And it's just exhausting after a while. But on the other side of that, how many of you guys have ever been around somebody that always seems to have just this positive outlook on everything? We see a few hands of that as well. And those are people that are more fun to be around, right? The joy that they have just seems to bubble up and be infectious. And as I was thinking about this this morning, I was reminded of my friend Taylor from when I worked at Spring Hill. Now, if Taylor walked through those doors right now, you would know. Uh, he had dreadlocks down to about here. Uh, he was like six foot six, so he towered over everyone. He was the epitome of like the surfer dude style, like way he talked and presented himself. But in everything, he just exuded this positive attitude to the point where all of his campers always had a great time because he made everything exciting. Even one time I remember we were at dinner, which was on this little island, or peninsula technically, and he was like, I have this idea. We're just going to run through the lake to dinner. And everybody's going, Taylor, what were you thinking? But Taylor was like, this is a great memory that these kids will have forever. And it was hard to be in a bad mood around him. In the same way, there are many people that I met in this church that just are filled with positivity and love and kindness. And even in some of the darkest situations that we can be taken through, they have this positive outlook. And these people's faith is shown through that optimism. And now, I know it can be really easy for us to simply look at the world that we live in, and it's really easy for us to do the opposite of staying positive. It'd be really easy for us to focus on the negative and the things that are going wrong in this world. Right now we're dealing with huge amounts of inflation and people are worried about how they're going to pay their bills or put food on the table. There's food shortages, worker shortage, supply chain issues. Some people are dealing with health issues like recovering from a heart attack or a stroke or they're living with dementia or Alzheimer's. Others are in pain from things like arthritis, back issues, and every day they're just in constant pain. Maybe some people just hate their job and they dread every morning getting up because they know that what they're about to walk into is just going to be something that brings them down. I also know that many people struggle with things like depression and the chemicals in their brain, even if everything seems to be going right in their world, their brain is telling them no. Nothing's great, and getting out of bed might be the biggest accomplishment they make that day. Other people out there have lost loved ones and are suffering with pain and loneliness, and it can be hard staying positive when you don't know what the future holds. We also see groups of people in our world that have such hatred for each other that it's infecting us, and we just see nothing but constant argument and strife. How many of you guys just over the last week have turned on the news and have said that's terrible to something you've seen? Because I know I have. And we can experience all these things and we can get so focused on the negative and the critical and it's so easy for us to start complaining, right? Because we think that our complaining might somehow help the situation. I have a truth for you, it very rarely does. And it can get easy to get depressed and withdraw from our own world. But Paul here, we find him in jail. And a little backstory on those who might not be as familiar with who Paul was. Paul was a faithful Jewish follower who was persecuting the followers of Jesus Christ, arresting them and putting them to death in some cases. And one day as he was traveling on the road to Damascus, Paul sees and talks to the resurrected Jesus who strickens him with blindness, he is later healed, and upon his healing, he devotes his entire life to the following of Jesus and the telling of his gospel to the Gentiles. And this does not make Paul the most popular person ever. In fact, throughout most of the Roman Empire, Paul was persecuted. He was arrested, he was beaten, uh, there were a few times he was sentenced to death but escaped. He was on a boat, and the boat crashed. He washes up on an island, gets bitten by a poisonous snake. And throughout all of this, Paul continues 
preaching the gospel and trying to plant churches wherever he goes. Paul was someone who has run out of towns and, his, again, his life was threatened. But still, his biggest focus was on proclaiming Jesus Christ. He had every excuse to focus on the negative. He had every reason to complain and to be critical of what was going on. But that's not what Paul does. Paul does the exact opposite. He chooses to look for the good things that have happened, even in his imprisonment. He chooses to remain positive and optimistic about whatever the future has in store for him. Paul realizes that everything that's happened to him has helped advance the good news for Jesus Christ. Even 2,000 years later, we're looking at the stories of what Paul went through for the hope and peace that comes from him. And instead of moping and complaining while in prison, he's preaching to the Praetorian Guard. The scripture we looked at says that all the Praetorian Guard knew why Paul was in prison. And it was for talking about this guy named Jesus. And I don't know about any of you, but if I was one of those guards, I would at least want to know what this guy believed in so much that he was happy to be in jail for it. Verse 14, Paul points out that most of the brothers and sisters have even more confidence to speak of Christ because he is boldly, because they are, uh, to speak the word of Christ more boldly and bravely because he is in jail. Has anybody out there ever seen the movie Dead Poets Society? I see one or two hands. Uh, in this movie, Robin Williams plays a teacher and he's trying to inspire his students. And near the end of the movie, the administration comes and they're going to whisk Robin Williams' character away because they don't like how he's been doing things. And at one point he goes, sometimes you just have to stand on your desk and do something different. And all of the boys in this class, as they're taking Robin Williams' character out, are emboldened by what he's taught them. And they all stand up on their desks and they proclaim, oh, captain, my captain. And we've seen things like that in other movies where somebody kind of rallies to this cause because they believe in it so. And that's exactly what happens with Paul. He has encouraged so many people that even though he is courageously and willingly suffering for the cause of Christ, he empowers people to speak boldly and bravely. And it brings Paul this great amount of joy. Paul talks about sharing the gospel, and he talks about there's some people that are even doing it for uh, some not great motives. Let's be honest, even in today's day and age, we hear about some people preaching the gospel for great reasons because they feel this love of Christ and want to go and share it with everyone they possibly can. But there are others that when they see the gospel, they view it as nothing more than a tool for personal advancement or personal gain. I, I can't help but think about the number of specifically televangelists we've heard about over the years who we find out later on had embezzled so much money from their organizations or they were... Um, the one I can never forget, and I can't remember offhand who this was, but there was a man who once said on a message he was giving, I believe that God is telling all of you to give to my organization so I can buy a plane. How many of you have questions when you hear that, or is it just me? And there are people even in Paul's day that are preaching the word of God for impure motives, for personal gain, for personal satisfaction, to try to compete with Paul. But I love Paul's response to this. He said, I don't care whether a person is sharing for pure or impure motives. He chooses to focus to be glad that the word of God is being shared at all. And while I wish that everybody would share the gospel out of good and pure motives, we know that sometimes great things can come out of not great circumstances, right? So Paul chooses to focus on the good and be glad, even in prison, even in chains, because he is so happy that the word of God is being shared to the people in the world. In verse 19, Paul shares his optimism about hopefully being released from prison. He says uh, that he is confident through prayers of the saints and the help of the Holy Spirit of God that he will be released from prison and he will continue spreading the gospel message. And I love this because Paul's in a place where none of us want to be, right? But his focus is on getting back out and doing something that he is passionate for. And if any of you guys have ever been in that situation where you're somewhere, you're like, I really don't want to be there, but I'm waiting to go do that thing that I love doing. 
For some of you, it might be going to work every day, and you're just sitting there going, okay, i got 45 more minutes, and then I can go out and do the things that I truly care about. For others, I hope you truly enjoy your jobs and uh, get pleasure and satisfaction out of doing that. But Paul was looking forward to getting out of prison and sharing this message with people. Then we get into a little bit of an interesting section where Paul's talking about living for Christ or dying to go to be with the Lord. I'm going to read verses 20 through 26 to you again where it says, It is my expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame for anything. Rather, I hope with daring courage that Christ's greatness can be seen in my body now as always, whether I live or die. Because for me, living serves, serves Christ and dying is even better. If I continue to live in this world, I get the results of my work, but I don't know if I would prefer to be torn between the two because I want to leave this life to go and be with Christ, which is far better. Whether it's more important for me to stay in this world for your sake, I'm sure of this. I will stay alive and remain with you to, hope, to help your progress and your joy and your faith and to increase your pride in Jesus Christ through my presence when I visit you again. Paul is so real with the people he talks to in these letters. He talks about the hope of Christ's greatness that he's seen now and always. But he can't help but point out that part of him knows that going to be with God in glory is going to be far better. That's a truth that I hope all of us know, that one day the, what this world has will go away and we will be with our creator in perfect paradise that he has created for us because he could not imagine eternity without us. That's a hope that we can cling to, even in those times where life seems its darkest, is no matter what happens, final victory has already been won. And for those that place their hope and trust in Jesus Christ, they have this promise of salvation. But Paul still wrestles with this. He goes, I know that if my life on this earth ended, I would be in paradise. But I still think I have work to do here on this earth. I know that there are still people that I can reach for Christ. There are still people out there that need to hear this message of love and truth and hope and repentance that I offer. Because Paul had been impacted by Jesus. He couldn't help but tell others about it. And he wanted to continue to do ministry. He wanted to continue to inspire more people to go out and serve Christ. Paul's optimism shines through when he says, it's more important for me to stay here on this world for your sake so that your joy and hope and faith may be completed and grow. Paul's positive outlook is so amazing in all of these situations we see him on. His optimism for his release from prison, his continued willingness and wanting to serve God and inspire others, his optimism that one day he will be with God in paradise forever. And again, it can be so easy for us to focus on the negative and how this world is constantly trying to tear us and others down and tear itself apart, it seems. But maybe we need to be more like Paul and try to focus on the good things. Because even in the darkest situations, to me, there always seems to be at least a point of light. It may seem far off, it may seem small, but again, for those that place their hope and trust in Jesus Christ, we have that final hope. That this life is only a short pit stop on the journey to paradise and eternity. And when I think of that, some, t some of those things that may seem hard to deal with don't seem as bad. My hope is that as we look at this, we will take up the challenge to have that positive outlook on things. No matter what's going on in our world, no matter what's going on in our own lives, my hope is that we choose the joy and goodness of the life that God gives us. And I hope that we can resist that temptation to be negative and critical Sometimes of God, sometimes of other people, and sometimes of this world. And that we choose to remain positive and optimistic about the life and what the future holds. And that's a truth, isn't it? Because we don't know what tomorrow holds for us. We don't know what's going to happen even when we leave this building. 
But at the end of the day, we have that amazing final hope that God offers to all who put their faith and trust in him. Let's pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I want to thank you for all that you do for us, whether we realize it or not. God, you are there with us in the darkness. And many times, God, you are that light of hope. Let us stay focused on that. Let us stay focused on the positive and not get dragged down to the negative because your enemy would want nothing more for us to focus on only the negative in life. God, I thank you for everyone here. And I hope that as they go from this place, they remember the positivity that only can come from you. Amen. Well, as the band's making their way back up here, I just want to remind everyone that we do take up an offering every week that can be found either in the back of the sanctuary or you can give online. There's multiple ways to do that. And it's your gifts and your offerings uh, that help us spread that hope and that positivity of Jesus Christ to people in this community and in this world. So during this next song, uh, I want to invite you to give. I also want to remind you all that after this song, we will be taking communion. Uh, if you do not pick up a communion element on the way in, uh, raise your hand during the song, and I believe Don will come through and uh, give you one of those. I want to remind you all that in the United Methodist Church, we serve what's called open communion, meaning you do not need to be a member of this church or this denomination. You just need, want, uh, need to have a want and a desire to know the Lord better. So this time I turn it over to the band. Let's stand and sing together. All of the earth makes straight a highway, a path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Call back the sinner, make way for the saint. Let every nation shout of your fame. Jesus is coming soon.
have a seat. What you hold in your hand is a reminder of the greatest sacrifice that could ever have been given. I'm reminded as as Jesus took the bread with his disciples, as he broke it and as he said to all of them, take this and eat, he knew full well what was going to happen. He knew that he was about to pay the penalty for all of their sins. But he did so because of the hope that he knew it would bring. So at, that, at this time, let us remember that hope and take and eat. And as he took the cup, he knew full well that his blood was going to be spilled for us. He knew that he was about to undergo one of the worst things he could possibly go through on this earth. But he, again, he wanted to give us that hope and that joy of eternal salvation and he did so willingly for every one of us here. So let us remember that as we take and drink. Let's pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you that even though we did not deserve the hope that you offer, even though that salvation could have been the farthest thing from your mind, you came and willingly laid down the life of your Son for us so that we would have a joy and a hope and an optimism that could surpass all human understanding. And God, this morning as we take these gifts, we take these symbols of your love and your joy, let us never forget just how much you care about us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. It's important to know that, it's not important, it's important. It's important to know that God does love us. God forgives us. God takes us and makes us new. I had one of those uh, communion cups that, you know, you get the one every now and again that you can't get this thing open. So I did not partake in the bread this morning because I couldn't get it open. It doesn't matter to God. If you, if you get to heaven or God, you're standing in line, metaphorically, you're standing in line and God says, I'm sorry, you, you missed the communion that day. Or any number of other ridiculous things that you might have done. We don't have to worry about it. God offers forgiveness. God offers life. God offers a life eternal, free from guilt. Free from, oh, dang it. We just turn to him. Turn to him and offer our lives to him. Let us sing our final song together.
Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. His amazing love for God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one is waiting God so love the world Amen thank you for worshiping with us have a great week ahead we'll see you next time